here's the first thing I'm going to point out. You notice in this particular case, I went to cos cos, right? So I can get that on both sides. I could do this to sine sine if I wanted to. How would I do it? We're not going to go ahead and solve it all the way, but how would I do it? What could I do differently? X minus. Here I've got sine x and cos x both there, and I chose to boot across minus sine x, right? I can just take go across cos if I want to. I can say sine x equals minus cos x, right? And I can say by definition, cosine is what? Sorry, that's a sine. In terms of sines, it's the complement, right? Which is pi onto minus x, yeah? Ah, but look, what kind of function is sine? What kind of symmetry does it have? Oh, it's an odd function, right? So therefore, in this place, I would write... Okay, now you should see, without me even finishing it, there's a marvelous symmetry to this way of approaching the solution. Look at, look at this line, very carefully, versus this line. Do you see how symmetrical they are? Now, I could go ahead and I could find a solution from there. Um, I could do that, but right at the beginning you suggested to me, this guy I can do by auxiliary angle. I can do this by auxiliary angle. Okay? So how would I do this? I'm trying to confirm for myself whether I have the right solution or not. Okay? I know we could be really, really rigorous about it, but how good's your memory? What's the amplitude of my new function going to be? Square root of 2. It's the square root of, you know, you're, you see where you're getting the coefficients from, okay? Let's turn into sine. I'm pretty sure sine will be easier. What shift is going to be involved? What will my alpha, what will my auxiliary angle be? Pretty sure it will be plus pi. Now, if you'd like, you can go through all of the steps to content yourself that that is the case, okay? What would I do here? Well, I'm just trying to solve for it being equal to zero. So I'm going to take out this guy. Right, you just divide through. Okay. Hmm. What's the solution to this? Oh, it's just um, it's just the um, the n through n n pi. Yeah, it's just n pi. Hold on, hold on. No, it's not. This is not the general solution for sine. It's plus what? Minus. Minus one to the n of zero. sine zero. inverse of zero. zero. Yeah. Zero, which is zero, right? So now what do I do? I say x equals n pi <coughs> take away pi on four. Okay. So what just happened? We went through one path. We took we took cosine. We said let's put it all on the cosines. Use general solution. What well, happened to be a dead end? Weird, but okay. There's no way to argue with the algebra. You take the path that's left, and this is what remains. You can use auxiliary angle and you can confirm it, right? You can confirm it again, if you like, by doing it this way, right? You can say x equals n pi plus, etc., and you can do your odd and even cases for this. Don't be surprised if one of the branches that you end up doing has no solutions, okay? Because again, there's this huge symmetry to the way you can solve this problem. So why is there no solution? Like, like why is there no solution yeah. to this part? Um, yeah, the way I think about it is this way. The whole idea of um, doing this and saying, no, nope, there's, two, there's two parts to this, is to say you're always getting a pair of solutions, a pair of solutions, a pair of solutions, okay? But when you come back to what you're actually solving, right, and what, the, like, what this turns into, we know its actual shape is closer to sine when you consider it within that domain, yeah. right? So therefore, you're not going to get those pairs of solutions. You're only going to get one every time. In fact, let's just do it this way, shall we? Okay, what are we saying? We're looking for sine x plus cos x. Okay, uh, let's just do a new one, shall we? So I'm looking for sine x plus... Can you guys see it? Is it visible? Cos x. There it is. Okay, now what I'm suggesting is my solutions are n pi take away pi over 4. So what do you think the first solution will be? I think the first solution will be negative pi on 4 for n equals 0, yeah? So I'm going to go x equals negative pi on 4. Bam. There's my first one. Now you have a look. Have a look. Where does the next one come up? And it comes up pi radians later. What's pi? Take away pi on 4. Come on. You can work it out. It's 3 quarter pi, right? So 3 pi on 4. Bam. 
There we go. Do you need me to do another one? Like, how, how, how many would we like? The next one's seven, seven pi on four? Pi on four. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Right. So you can see what you're getting here. Like, if this, if this had some solutions, it's like, no, no, they don't, they don't correspond to anything here. I've nailed every single one, okay? All right. Now, you've got some good time to get back into 1F. I only got you to start it. I'm gonna issue a few more questions now. But this actually, I mean, questions like this, they're already sort of towards the end of what you'll expect to see when you're doing general solution questions, okay? Um, you can see, that's a bit of a curveball, right? That's a total curveball. You know, when I talk about questions in the game, so it's like, eh, pretty straightforward. That's not straightforward at all. You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't believe how many students will get to this line, something will go wrong, and then they will somehow magically come up with solutions that come from this. And that's when we know, okay, someone doesn't understand what this problem is doing. 